What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here and today we're talking about the things that I keep in my camera bag. Now they're not always the most important things, but they're the things that I think that most filmmakers or photographers should, you know, maybe keep in mind or check out for themselves because you may end up using some of the same gear. So without further ado, ah, let's roll that intro. <laughs> Welcome back again, great to have you here, nice to see you. I figured I would take a little bit of time today to go over some of the stuff that I carry in my camera bag. A few of you have been asking, I've been updated since, I've added a few things, I've taken a few things away. I think sometimes it's important to watch these types of videos because certain gear does absolutely enable you to get certain types of shots and think different ways. So it's really interesting to me to see how different filmmakers and filmmakers that I look up to, photographers that I look up to, it's really cool to be able to see what they carry with them as tools to create the art that I'm a fan of. And I want to take a quick minute to thank our sponsor for this episode, Squarespace. If you're looking for a website, a blog, a store, somewhere to put your portfolio, these are the guys to go to. It's an all-in-one platform where everything is taken care of for you. You don't have to worry about stuff like patching, upgrading, installing, none of that. Gone are the days. Tons of beautiful, award-winning designer templates to choose from. They've got award-winning 24-7 customer service, so you're never left hanging. They make domains easy. They make the whole thing easy. If you want to make the jump, head over to squarespace.com slash McKinnon, enter code McKinnon at checkout, and save 10% off your first purchase. Boom. So when it comes to gear, seeing what people carry in their camera bags can really be beneficial. Sometimes I love looking through my friend's camera bags because I see things that maybe I didn't know existed before or I see things that I think to myself, well, what is it that you do with that? And they say, oh, well, I use this for this reason. And I'm like, oh, that is so smart. So we're gonna head over to the gear room. I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I keep in my camera bag. I, honestly, I don't keep a whole lot in there. The heavier the bag is, the more jam-packed it is with just heavy and cumbersome. You're digging through stuff outside to try and find things are dropping on the floor, lens caps or whatever. It just frustrates me. I'm frustrated right now just thinking about it. I think keeping a light, efficient kit that's tidy, clean, and has everything you need to get the job done is very important. So these are the items that I use that I carry with me to get the job done. So this here is the Ronin M by DJI. This is what I use to stabilize my shots. Now I just got this, this is pretty new. I've used it before and I'm not new to three axis gimbals. I've used the Moby M10 and all those different types of things. But this one I specifically got just because it was a little cheaper. It was exactly what I needed to get the job done. So if you guys are looking for steady, smooth shots that aren't in slow motion, you want to track somebody or follow somebody in a shot, this thing here is amazing. This will balance DSLRs, little mirrorless cameras, bigger cameras, that kind of stuff. But if you're going to balance a camera like I'm using, which is the 1DX, you need to get the extension rods for it to balance out that center of gravity because the camera's too tall, which means it's top heavy. So I had a hell of a time trying to balance it. But like a 5D Mark III, Mark IV, or a smaller mirrorless camera, anything like that, you're gonna have no issues balancing just about right away when you're using the Ronin M. So it comes with two batteries. It doesn't come with a case, which is kind of a piss off. So I'm gonna have to get something because I just don't wanna throw this in my trunk and be like, peace guys, I'm out. It looks really intimidating at all these wires and different parts and it looks really delicate, but they're pretty reliable. I have some footage of the first time I was trying to assemble it, which you can see right here. Oh, super anticlimactic. What the hell is all this sh Oh my God. Oh, this is gonna take forever. I'm gonna be here for days. Who invented this? But after the first time, it goes like a breeze, super, super fast. It also comes with this tuning stand, which you set up to help tune. The one downside is you have to bring this with you if you're gonna be shooting outdoors, because if it ever needs to be retuned or calibrated or balanced, you have to bust this out because there's nowhere to actually sit this down when your camera's on it. So you're either holding it or you're putting it on the tuning stand. So if you're gonna use the Ronin, this has to come with you. Okay, next up, let's talk lenses. This is the 35 millimeter 1.4 L series Canon lens. Pretty good lens, I dig it. The only thing about this lens that I don't like is it's got some purple fringing. So if you're gonna use it for photography, when you get into shooting highlights and stuff like that, or your sky's blown out, you're gonna see a lot of purple fringe around your photos. And I find it especially bad with the 35 mil. However, 35 millimeter is an incredible focal length for just about everything. It's great for portraits, it's great for landscapes. It's a really good all around 
round lens. So eventually you should make sure you have a 35 mil focal length. Next up is the 14 millimeter super wide lens. Look at that element. You can't actually put a lens cap on this, but I don't really use lens caps because they just slow me down. Super wide lens. You don't get lots of distortion on the edges, which is really good. So I like using this one. And this is my favorite lens ever in life. I think I showed you guys this back on the first gear video that I did but this lens is the 7200 2.8 Mark II image stabilized lens. So it's stabilized, all the zoom is internal. So nothing telescopes out of the lens, which is great. All that nice B-roll is done with this because it really compresses the background. It gives you an incredible bokeh, makes that background super silky smooth, and it just looks insane. So this lens is what I use when I'm gonna do a portrait where I really wanna isolate somebody or blow out the background or get some really good B-roll because the image stabilization is nice and it's just, I, I don't even know, it's just magic. It's just like the nicest lens ever, okay? So this is a 100 millimeter macro. They make an L version of this, but honestly, I don't really think you need it. I use this for product shots, close-up shots. If you're gonna shoot someone's eyeball or something like that, this will get really, really, really close. But if you're gonna get that close, you probably want this on a tripod, especially if you're doing video with it. If it's photos, you might not need to, but all around, really, really good lens. Okay, this is the 24 mil. I use this lens everywhere. This is my absolute favorite lens. It's beat to hell. I don't use a filter on it. I barely ever use caps on it. It's been in the oceans, it's been hit by bullet casings. It's honestly, it just won't die. I'm almost looking forward to it dying so I can get a new one because I don't even have the rubber ring anymore. All the weather seal around the edge is pretty much broken. So it's, uh, it's, it's had better days. However, that's a testament to say that this lens has endured everything. So it is by far my most favorite lens. Ah, the Mavic Pro. This is the drone that I use. This drone is insane. I don't, ugh, I don't even understand how this exists. It's so small. It can fit in like your hoodie pocket, your sweatshirt pocket, folds out incredibly well. The design of this is insane. I don't actually fly it with this little case on. I take that off because I just use it to protect the camera when it's in my camera bag, but that's the beauty of it. I don't need an extra backpack for this. I don't need a dedicated case for this. This just goes in my camera bag with everything else, which means I'm gonna use it more. When I had the Phantom 3 Pro, I had a huge bag for it all kinds of accessories. Just one more thing I had to bring with me, which I didn't want to. So I've been using this a lot, having a lot of fun with this. I mean, these are so cool. I think you can even fly these indoors. You know, I've never even tried flying this indoors. I wonder if I can fly this in my office. Never again. Okay, when I'm vlogging on the go, I use the Rode mic, the Rode mic pro. As you guys know, I hate the battery door to death. I think this is the worst design ever in life. However, the mic is really good. It's got nice options on the back for, for amping up those decibels if you wanna get a little more volume out of it. I always throw this in the bag just, just in case. A stabilizer gimbal for your phone. It sets up in seconds and it's just really good if I wanna get some quick B-roll footage and I want my shots to be steady. Now I will say it doesn't work the best with the iPhone 7 Plus I've noticed. You get a lot of jittering because I think the stabilization on this and the stabilization that's on the phone, I think they fight together. So you kind of get some kind of jitter. Um, I'm going to do a whole video on that, to be honest, in the future with iPhone videos. So I'll probably have more to talk about then. But for now, any smartphone goes on this. So it's not just the iPhone. Really, really handy. It's in a small package. It's not very expensive and it fits in this little bag. So... You're able to just toss that in your camera bag, throw it in the back seat of your car, and it's there in case you need it. Okay, for audio, I'm using a couple of things. I use a Zoom H4n if I want to record off-camera audio. This is a field recorder. So it's got a microphone up here. It's got two XLR jacks on the bottom, and you can plug labs into this. You can plug boom mics into this. You can plug anything into this. So this is really good to record really high-quality off-camera audio, and then you can sync it later in post. Also got a couple sets of Sennheiser G3 labs. So this this is what you guys typically see me using when I'm doing my tutorials, when I'm doing any kind of videos, I'm always using these. I plan to switch this out to a boom mic just because I'm done with it. I'm done wiring myself up with a mic pack every for every video. It's just kind of uncomfortable, a little bit of a pain in the ass. However, the audio is really reliable. If you're going to do any talking head stuff or interview stuff, these are great. Okay, this thing I use all the time. This is a Mophie 5x portable battery charger. I think it's, no, it's full. 
little battery indicator on the side. I bought a short USB for it, so if I ever plug my phone into it, it's not this massive cord hanging off, but this will charge your phone five times or a GoPro. So this always goes in my camera bag everywhere I go because I'm always running out of battery, especially if you're using stuff like the Osmo Mobile. And I can charge my GoPros. It's got two ports. I can charge them both at the same time. So this, this is a lifesaver. I use this all the time. And the GoPro. I keep them in this bag. I think this thing is called Casey. Clever. And inside, I have everything I need if I'm going to shoot anything with GoPros. Their little selfie stick, which you can use if you're skateboarding, snowboarding, skiing, boosted boarding, anything like that. And this also turns into a tripod, which is really, really handy. Got a Hero 3 Plus black in here. So this is the old guy. And then I've got a 5 black inside here too, which you guys know I got recently. So just a nice little case. It comes with some zippered mounts in here. So... This thing zips shut and there's an extra zipper inside to keep all those little screws and memory cards and stuff. So nothing's ever going to get lost. It just closes up. It's a nice hard shell case that toss that in my backpack or in the back seat. And then everything is contained to this nice little package. So this, I'm a big fan of this. Boom. And then we got these little gear bags. I keep these little bags with me and I'll link all this stuff below so you can find them. And inside here, I've got more little pouches that have a bunch of compact flash cards and CFast cards and that kind of stuff. It's all about organization. I've got extra batteries for the 1D in there, extra batteries for the Mavic. And then I've got an intervalometer in there that you guys saw in that time-lapse video. These little pouches are nice to have because they just segregate everything and you can have like four or five of these. You can have one for audio, you can have one for batteries, you can have one for cables. You just drop them all in and then everything is nice and tidy. It's all about having nice tidy stuff. Okay, so it's important to remember that these aren't things that you need to have. They're things that make the job easier. They're things that I use to get the job done. Some of those things do make my job easier. Some of them make my life more difficult. Like that DJI Ronin is a pain in the ass. That thing sucks to tune and balance, it's heavy. Like, how do you just carry that on an airplane? How do you carry that anywhere? It's just, you know, sometimes those things are the pains of filmmaking. Yes, it's a pain in the ass, but those things separate us from the people that aren't willing to put in the work to get the shots. I will hike with that thing. I will hike with heavy cameras and lots of lenses so that I get home and when I start editing, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, look at this shot. And I would never have got that shot if I didn't bring all that crap with me. Now there's also the other side of that discussion, which is sometimes it's not practical to bring so much crap with you. It's heavy, your shoulders get tired, your arms get tired, just carrying the stuff, which means when you actually go to shoot, you're already exhausted. So don't be discouraged if you can't afford any of this stuff, or don't be discouraged if you don't have any of this stuff. Just use it as a means to understand my process a little bit better. Okay, so that's where I'm gonna end it today. Thanks so much for watching this video. Like I mentioned, all the links are below if you wanna check out any of that gear. Hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already, and, and, got so much to film this week. This, we're just dipping our toes in right now. Like we're scratching the surface. What did they say? We're barely scratching this. We're just, I'll see you guys next time.